What is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys three different transitions that you can use for your videos. Now starting out with the first transition which is actually the easiest out of the three transitions. I will be going from easiest to I guess like medium to hard so the first transition here is this little slide that you can do either panning to the right, up or down. It really doesn't matter, but the main effect is just this super smooth slide effect. The second transition I'll be going over is a smooth 3D zoom in right here. I did a similar video previously on my YouTube channel kind of covering this effect, but it's more tailored towards like car edits. So this is a bit different and it's honestly not too hard of an effect to accomplish, but it does require a bit more steps than this little pan transition here. For the last transition is this zoom out effect. So I just have the camera zooming out of the center of his jersey. And you can see if I play this back here and you can get super creative with this transition. You can zoom in, zoom out, you can zoom into different things. Obviously it doesn't have to be exact like this jersey here so you can pretty much do this transition with anything that you want to zoom in or out of but starting out with transition one here we just have these two different clips in our timeline so on our first clip here we're going to hit p on our keyboard to open up the position values and let's set a keyframe a few frames before the end of that first clip and then go to the end of that first clip here and then set a keyframe and you're actually not going to be able to see anything if you move this it'll just be showing your clip right next to that so i'm just going to move this keyframe over one frame to the left so I can actually see what I'm doing. So by moving this X position, I'm going to move this value to the left here. So it's decreasing and it's moving your footage over to the left. I'm going to drag this so it's all the way off the screen like this, as well as you want to make sure you have motion blur enabled. As you can tell, there's motion blur on this layer. So just make sure you have motion blur enabled for this and pretty much all the other effects I'm going to be doing or transitions in this tutorial. So yeah. Motion blur is very important in your transitions. But let's go ahead and move that keyframe back to the end. Let's go ahead and select these keyframes. Hit F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them, or you can just right click them, go to keyframe assistant, the ease, select those, go into the graph editor, and then right click this graph, and then make sure you have auto select graph type enabled. Let's go ahead and move this left point all the way to the right, and the right point all the way to the right as well. And there we go, now we have our first keyframe animated, so now we can go on to the next clip. Open up the position values again for this one. Let's go ahead and set a keyframe at the start of that clip. Go a few frames over and set one over here as well. And for the start keyframe on this one, we're actually going to drag this one to the right and just make sure it's off the screen like that. So when you play that back, you can see that it's actually sliding over correctly. If we drag this over to the left, like we did for the first one, it's going in the opposite direction and that obviously doesn't look smooth. So yeah, just make sure that your transition is sliding over correctly. And then we can just go ahead and do the same thing by easy easing these keyframes and then creating a similar graph. But this time these keyframes are going to be going over to the left side of our graph. Now the last thing we need to do is apply motion tile. So in the effects and presets, drag on motion tile to your first clip, make the output width to like 200 and then mirror edges. And you can just copy and paste that onto your next clip. And it actually looks like it doesn't fill the whole entire frame. So let's change the output width to 300. And there we go. That is how you create that super smooth sliding transition. All right, so now for transition two, we're gonna be going over how to create this 3D zoom in or zoom out effect. So this one, like I said, it's gonna be a bit harder to do than the previous one, but if you follow the steps, then you should be able to get a similar result as mine. So let's go ahead and start out by rotoscoping out our subject. So what we wanna do is go up to the rotoscope tool and then double click our layer. And then if you don't already know how to use the rotoscope tool, then you just want to outline your subject and it should do a pretty good job of selecting it. And yeah, it looks like it's actually perfect. So we don't have to do anything. Let's just go ahead and hit freeze. So our road brush actually freezes onto our, our layer here. So once that's done, you just want to make sure you're back inside your main composition or your timeline. And let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. And on the bottom layer, just go ahead and delete that rotor brush. Now the second layer that we're going to be transitioning into, we're going to bring this one in between our two clips. And I'm going to drag this clip somewhere around the start, a few frames after. So you just want to make sure that most of the clip is overlapping with your first shot and you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit S on our keyboard, to open up the scale, scale this down. And I'm going to be transitioning up here in the top left. So let's move this around here like that. Then just go ahead and right click in the blink area of your timeline and hit new and new null object. Next, you want to go ahead and select this null object and you can see by moving this little anchor point and moves around the null object. You want to place this pretty much on the center of your footage, but I find that when you place it at the center of your footage, it doesn't actually zoom in exactly where you want it to zoom in at. So you're gonna have to play around with it a bit, but I'm gonna offset it to like right here. Hopefully that looks good. So next we just want to take the pick whip tool 
for our layers. So if you select all the layers here and then use this parent tool and parent it to that null object, now you can see all of our layers are parented to the null. So if we go into the null, we can scale this and it zooms straight into that layer. And yeah, that actually was perfect. And if you notice, if you try to move around that null object, it's actually going to move around your whole entire composition. So if you're going to adjust it and it wasn't perfect the first time, you're going to have to unparent those layers and then go back and move the null object and then reparent them. It's kind of annoying, but if you know another way to fix that, then let me know in the comments. But yeah, once you have that, then it's a super smooth scale in on both of those layers. So now we can go ahead and create our animation. So at the start, we're going to set a keyframe on the scale on our null object. And then towards the middle of our timeline, we're going to just zoom in all the way. So it fills in the frame. Let's go ahead and select those keyframes and easy ease them by hitting F9. Go into the graph editor and you just want to make a graph that's pretty smooth. So in this case, I want to be going for this graph shape that looks like an S. So if you don't really know how to use a graph, then I guess just kind of follow what I'm doing here. But it'll slowly speed ramp towards the middle here, get super fast and then slow down towards the end. And once again, we will need to enable motion blur for this composition as well. And let's go ahead and apply motion tile onto our middle layer. So let's make the output width 300 and output height 300 as well. And then just mirror those edges. Next on that middle layer, go ahead and hit T on your keyboard to bring up the opacity. Let's set a keyframe at 100% and we're going to move this towards kind of where the transition starts to happen right there. And then let's go to the start of the clip and bring this down to zero. And there we go. That looks super clean. As you can see at the end, you can kind of see the first clip kind of starting to appear back onto our frame. So you can just trim that down once the transition finishes because you don't need that other layer. You just want to transition to that second clip. So there we go. That is pretty much that transition done. Another thing I like to do on top of this is just add some shake. This helps smooth out the transition. Um, you can add whatever shake you want to use, but I'm just going to use my shake presets here. I'll have them linked down in the description below if you want to go ahead and try one of them out. Let's try the shake wide rotate. Make sure motion blur is enabled. And now let's play that back. And yeah, that <laughs> definitely smooths out our animation. Like I said, you don't have to use it. You can just go ahead and leave it simply like that, but it's up to you what you want to do. And yeah. All right, so now for transition three, we're going to be going over this zoom out effect. And this one is a little bit more complicated, but if you have a pretty good understanding of After Effects, then you should be able to follow along pretty easily. But we just have our two layers here once again, and we're going to be transitioning through the jersey. So any kind of shape that you see in your footage that you feel like you could easily kind of zoom out of, or that would make sense for your shot, then that's what I would go ahead and do. So I'm going to drag my second layer, the one that I'm going to be transitioning out of pretty close to the start. And what we're going to do is rotoscope out the center here. You can create a mask if you wanted to, but honestly, the mask doesn't follow this um, jersey pretty well. I just create a mask here super quickly. You can see if I go ahead and track this mask to his jersey, it does a pretty good job at the start and then just totally loses it. As you can see, that's not very good. So we're just going to be using the roto brush. So go up to the roto brush again and we're going to go ahead and only select this part of this jersey. But yeah, as you can see, that pretty much did a perfect job. So we don't have to do anything here. But what we do need to do is go over here to the rotor brush and invert this. And then we can go ahead and freeze our rotor brush. Now back inside of our main composition, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this rotor brush layer three times. One, two, three. And what we're gonna do is select all these layers and make them 3D by hitting this cube. And using the Z value here, I'm gonna scale this down. Actually, you can't see the layer right now moving behind it and that's because it's background here is enabled so let's just disable that for now and we're going to move this back layer by 500 and then position it so we can see it centered on that jersey and then for the one right after that let's make this one a thousand and then move this one like that so you kind of get what i'm doing here i'm just adding 500 every time so the next one is going to be 1500 so once you've done that you should see these multiple layers in the background it looks kind of weird right now it's like there's like a hole in this chest but if you go ahead and toggle back on your first clip you'll see that those layers go away so what we need to do is open up the position and scale this layer all the way down by using the z value you don't want to actually like scale it or else it won't be moving in 3d space so scale it down and we're just going to go ahead and line this something like that that should be good for now. Now let's go ahead and create a new camera. So just right clicking down here, layer new camera. Let's make our preset 28 millimeter as well as creating a null object. And let's parent our camera to the null 
and make the null object 3D. Now opening up the position value on that null object, let's go ahead and move the Z distance all the way in. And we can also position it so it's actually going through the circle here. And just zoom in all the way till you can't see that jersey anymore. And let's go ahead and fix this layer, our first clip, so it actually fills the frame here. Obviously it is way too scaled down. So now when you play it back, it looks like a normal clip, but as soon as you move this null object out back to the default value, you can see it slowly reveals our next clip here. So what we're gonna do is set a keyframe for the position and then move over, or it's I guess a little over halfway and we can just go ahead and right click our position value and hit reset. That's just gonna create a keyframe at the default value. And then let's go ahead and select those keyframes, F9 to ease, ease them once again. And then by using this graph, we're gonna move both these points towards the middle. So now it's like a ramp that slowly goes up it's super fast towards the middle and it slows back down. So if you play that back, you should get an effect that looks something similar like that. And it looks pretty awful right now without motion blur enabled. So definitely wanna make sure you have motion blur enabled for all of those layers there. Also, if you enable the motion blur and you still don't see it being actually applied, like in this case here, I literally have it applied on my composition in all of these layers and obviously it's not doing anything. If you're in the newer versions of After Effects, there's like this advanced 3D setting. So you wanna make sure that's on classic and then you should have that motion blur applied onto your footage. It's a weird little thing, and I don't know why After Effects does that, but yeah, just make sure you're on Classic 3D. Now to fill in that hole, so it actually transitions out of this shot and then fills in that hole, what we're gonna do is duplicate our top layer, and then on the one right underneath that, let's just go ahead and delete that rotor brush. And now you can see the hole is filled back in. But what we're gonna do is create a quick little mask around this. And I guess I might as well just track that mask super quickly to the jersey. And then just go ahead and hit P on your keyboard to open up the position values. And we're gonna set a keyframe at the default value here, which is kind of just showing the jersey fully revealed. And we're gonna leave that keyframe a little bit after towards the zoom out. And then right where the camera starts to zoom out of that kind of shot there, let's go ahead and move this frame down by using the Y value. And then let's just go ahead and easy easy these keyframes by creating a similar graph that we did for the camera animation. And yeah, that just looks super clean. You can go ahead and mess around these keyframes here. Now, lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply some shake to this just to help smooth everything out. And honestly, kind of recommend doing that. So what I'm gonna do is just pre-compose all these layers because it's honestly kind of a mess having all of that in your timeline. And then we're just gonna create an adjustment layer like we did earlier. Make sure motion blur is enabled. And we're gonna try using the shake Y small here. So yeah, here's what that effect looks like with that shake applied. As you can see, it's pretty subtle, but definitely does help sell the overall transition. Another thing I'm noticing while I'm playing this back is you can kind of see there's some edges of the frame that's missing. Let's just go back into that composition. And on our first layer, we're just gonna go ahead and apply motion tile once again, because that is what fixes everything. So let's just go ahead and apply that onto here and make the output width and output height 300 mirror edges. Now you don't see anything besides the clip, which is what we want. And there we go. That is pretty much how you create these three transitions for your videos instead of After Effects. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.